Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome today to Masters of Orion from NGD Studios. This game is currently in early access. You can currently buy a pack that will give you all the original Masters of Orion games um, as well as this new early access version which is them bringing the game up to well the modern times as it were so it's pretty awesome. I've really been enjoying this. Someone actually sent this to me as a bit of a present which was nice um, and then I've got kind of addicted to it. There is, don't get me wrong, there is problems with it. It is early access, so there's a lot of things that are very undercooked or missing completely. So, I'm just going to do single player. And we're just going to start... I'll probably do a new game, show you a bit of the early game, and then if you want to, I'll do another video where i show you a bit later on. It's entirely up to you guys, but I just kind of want to generally natter about the game. And just generally have a look into it, so we'll do a new game. So... Healing you have multiple different planet. races. The proud Alkari are an old race. I just realised you can do custom race, which is pretty damn cool. Ooh, I'd like to play with all this, but maybe not today. I'll just put it on this screen for a minute so the talking doesn't get a bit weird with it telling you about the race in the background and also me talking about them. Several races in the game, not all of them are in the game yet. That voice that you heard talking a second ago will just give you a little bit of basic information about each one of the races. Most likely, I'm going to play the bird people, not going to lie. Actually, no. Today we won't play the bird people, because I played the bird people last time, so just in case there's any anything that might change my opinion on this, we'll change race. I won't be the bird people, as much as I really want to be the bird people. The Alkari, should be saying. Right. Let's pick. Coexisting in a sprawling, jumbled network filled with incessant chattering voices and... It was during the darkest times of human history that the Age of the Khans dawned. All over their home. Primal in their ways. Deep in the caves of Kuldan, the insect-like Klakon evolved to form the Hive. A unified consciousness stretching from drone to queen. As such, the industrious Klekon have no individual needs, no desires, and no ambitions other than the benefit of the hive itself. This effectively makes them tireless workers Ooh. and fearless warriors, each and every one willing to give their lives for the hive. We're going to try them. Now, I played this the other day, and either I just didn't see these guys, or these are different races that have been added since I last played. I do not I did not recognise the Meklar and I did not recognise the Clacklon. Clackon. I don't recognise them. I may have I may have just been completely blinded last because last time I was kind of I played this I was just like bird people, play. And then just got assigned the races for the rest of the game. So maybe I just completely overlooked them, but I did not see that. Uh we'll leave everything else as it is. Why change? You know? Oh. I'm hoping you guys dig this game. I've been a big, like, Civilization player for a long time. This game, this sort of version reminds me very heavily of Civilization. Um, just the way pretty much everything works. City management's very similar. Um, the way you sort of manage your planets, your units, everything's very similar. It feels very familiar to me as a Civilization player. So if you've played Civilization, you're probably going to be pretty comfortable with this. Um, diplomacy screen's very similar. Um, there's like a committee thing where like one person can be like elected like the leader of the galaxy, very similar to um, the the later expansion. Is it Brave New World? The latest expansion of Civ Five. Drone in the background noise of the Clackon Hive Mind, as they have for millennia over the surface of Cold Dawn. The grunts of a worker, an infant's wail for nourishment, an elder's last breath. All shared as one, driven by a single purpose, to ensure the future of the Hive. Now the Clackons swarm towards the stars. Their nature is as relentless as it is simple. To devour, to consume, to thrive. Now this is the one thing I absolutely loved with this, is there's a lot of little cuts. Like every time you, you sort of like settle on a planet, you have a little cut scene of you settling. Okay, that's fine. Please don't keep doing that. You probably will. That will pop up occasionally. Now, 
I've worn this in other videos already, but I've recently got a new keyboard, and it's a mechanical keyboard, so it can be a bit clicky. You might hear that. I'm hoping I'll be able to cut that out. If I can't, I do apologise, but I will do my best to in the future. So, as it's it's a pretty good biome, mineral's not the best, and size isn't the best, so we want to be looking to expand pretty quickly. So what have we got to start with? Yeah, okay, please, shush. Uh, I might find out, see if I can find a way to turn that off. Uh, right, we have a scout here. So we're going to send you an auto explore because it makes more sense. And again, we'll do that with the other one as well. We'll just send them off around the galaxy. Now, the way things work, you've got a small star system here. And then each one of these is a jump point. So you've got a warp point here. And you can obviously see a point halfway, so that will obviously take a turn to get there and then a turn to get there. You can get better engines that will shorten that later on. And then at the start, we will need to go to each individual planet to identify it, find out its sort of properties, and then we can go and settle there. Later on, you can get all kinds of texts that change this. You can get warp gates from your actual planet, so you can warp from like this side of the galaxy to the other side of the galaxy. You can get scanners that automatically, as soon as you jump to an area, automatically scans all the planets in the area. You can turn gas planets into solid planets, so you can actually settle on those. There's lots of crazy, crazy texts in this game. And for now, because this is our only warp point into this area, I'm going to send my frigate there to defend. So he's going to guard there, because there is pirates in the game, and I would like to not have them coming to ruin my life. With a hive mind <sighs> I mean, there's a new ship there. That's always nice if you want to go for, like full on like aggressive. But for now, I think we're going to go for physics so we can increase our production. Which will also give me another moment that I can talk about the game a little bit more. There is quite a lot of mechanics, so I'm probably going to miss a lot of stuff, but I'll try and remember certain things. So one of the things that you have to remember, the more production you produce, the more pollution you'll produce. Now, if I understand this properly, once your pollution reaches a certain threshold, the planet becomes polluted. Once it stays like that for so long, it will degrade the biome by one, and then it will restart back to zero pollution and build back up again. So you can use your production to clear pollution and it is very recommended that you do that every so often. So I will be checking this quite a lot. So say for example here, you should have, or not yet, probably a tech that you need immediately, but there you go. It's something that you need to be aware of anyway. Morale, it's fairly self-explanatory. If people, the more happiness you have, the more people on the colony work. So... If there's 10 people on the colony, we'll do this for the sake of easiness and math, but you only have a morale of 50, only 5 of those workers will work. So it's in your best interest to keep morale as high as possible. <clears throat> defence score is basically just, if someone attacks the planet, how much defences are there to defend the planet. Credits, how much credits are bringing in population. It's how much population you have and how much its maximum is, so because this is only a small planet, it can only go to 11. So population here won't ever get that big so we got our first colony ship so we can actually settle somewhere so we're probably going to want him to get him to on with that frigate and then hopefully there'll be something over here that we can actually use to sell that's the hope now we need to choose our production now then what do we want here now Building a space factory is good. There you go, there's the pollution cleanup I was talking about before. I'm thinking a hydroponic farm would be good because it's just going to increase our food, but at the same time biospheres can be good because we also get the extra research as well. So I think for now though we'll go for biospheres because our population is fairly comfortable anyway, so we could do the research more so. So we'll go for that for now. So our scouts are beginning to make their move. And, yeah, it's all looking pretty fine. We can force them to move if we do so wish. And we'll wait with them for a minute. Now, you guys, I want you to jump over to here. So, if it, if two ships are together in an area and you both move at the same time, they will form a fleet. You seem to be able to stack units as much as you want. Uh, in my last game, one of the fleets that my enemy had was nearly 100 ships. It was about, like, 87 ships, something like that. Um, and I killed it with five ships because I, I ended up being just much higher tech than they were. But 
it, it's important to know. Okay, right, now. That's a pretty good planet. Again, only small, but very good biome and mineral. So it would be pretty good for like a mining planet. And you can see it's got the speciality of gold as well. These are all pretty good planets in honesty. These are really good planets. We basically want to just fill these things. So... Ooh... I kind of want to get that one. For now, but at the same time... That one should be alright. Let's 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 go for this one first. Please, most... So now we should be able to colonise. And you'll get these little awesome cutscenes. Where you get to see a little bit what the planet looks like. You get to see what your ships go down. Oh, I like that. I just think it's a cool little touch. Because it was always... If, you're, if you've ever played Civ, there's a moment where you drop a city and the city just pops down. And it's not really a big thing. <clears throat> Whereas I like with this with like you colonise and all of a sudden like it's this big galactic thing. I don't know. I just find that really satisfying. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. <clears throat> now, again I think we're going to go for biospheres. Let's build up the tech along the way. Okay, so there is an anomaly detected. So I should be able to get one of my scouts and send him straight over to that anomaly which is nice oh we found another person welcome stranger I am the Empress of the Mershon Pride if you scratch our backs we'll scratch yours okay we can do that right the Mershon are quite they can be quite fiery so we'll have to watch them that we don't get into a war too Who's early because <clears throat> that could cost us a lot now production again right here I'm gonna go for the space factory because we're gonna start needing them pretty soon now what space factories allow you to do is they're essentially like worker units so you can go down and put improvements down in places but the one thing that's very nice is you can put things down like um, it's basically like a military outpost sort of idea. So you can use put it on these warp points and it stops anyone going through unless they've got an open border contract. And generally, they flatten pirates. So pirates can't even get into the sector, which is great. Right, this frigate, I'm going to put him here and he's just going to sort of sit and defend to make sure nothing can come from this way. Because I've got a scout going that way, so I know there's nothing coming that way at the minute. Arriving at the anomaly, your fleet spots an awesome. abandoned container filled cool. with... The voice acting on this is really nice as well. Gives it a lot of character. That's one. Of th there's a lot of things with this game I just like. Now, probably the biggest plane, and there's lots of people that complain about this, is um, the combat. Now, I personally don't mind the combat because, generally speaking, I find combat can be quite irritating. What's this we found here? A pirate fleet has been detected over there. Well, that's not really much of an issue for us just yet, unless they can jump over here some way. Which I don't think they can. Bro, we need to make sure the Mashan don't get in here and just start, like, taking up all the areas. I'd like to... It looks like that's a closed-off area as well, so I wouldn't mind getting up there to explore that and seeing what's going on with that. Right... Choose some more. Okay, so we got that. So now we can update our blueprints on our ships. So now our frigate, we can upgrade that. It'll mean a little bit of extra production cost, but it should have better guns. Now. Research lab's always good. I want to get the science nice and high. I always like having good science. Now, for some of the other things that the game is missing, if I actually just find that the path to victory... Ah, that's the difference they have actually... Okay, so yeah, yeah, right, I can confirm this now. The game's been updated since I last played it, which is where I'm getting confused. When I last played this, technological victory and economic victory was not in the game, whereas now it is. So maybe I'm going to try going for this. Because last time I played, I was about to win a conquest victory, but I ended up getting a diplomatic victory. So, like, in, like, the last turn... <laughs> So I ended up winning that, but I think this time I'm gonna I might go for this technological victory because that's new and it'll just be interesting to try. So 
I like that. And economics not doing it. So things are being added to the game, which is I'm very happy about. I generally, even though I only played this a couple of days ago, did not see that it got updated. So there's the joys of auto-updating on Steam. Sometimes you don't see that things get updated. Okay. We'll do a little bit more, and then I want you guys to let me know if you want to see some more of this game. I want to try and get to the point where pirates are coming, so it can at least show you the combat in some way or another. Go back to your auto explore. Kind of wanted you to go up that way, but sure. Get away from that planet. These are my planets. You come anywhere near my planets, I slap your face. My planets. I have claimed this sector. I plead for a speck of your time. Uh, no contact. We can start to build a relationship with them. Go for an audience. Yeah, well, we don't need to get an audience with them for now. There's nothing we want to ask them for. Ooh. Nah, it's not actually that good. No, it's not that good either, apart from the fact that he's got gems on it, which... Maybe. Puska beseeches your attention. Right. Oh, I yes, I know the space factory is ready. I will deal with that in a moment. Right, we've got 5% pollution, but it's not necessarily too bad yet, so we can afford to do a little bit more. Going to get the automated factory. Just because it means that future stuff we'll be able to build just a little bit quicker. And once again over here, I'll probably do the same in all honesty. And get a factory. Just future-proof myself a little bit. Now, this little fella, I want him to fly over to here. And then we're going to build an outpost here to defend things coming from this way. That's the hope. Hopefully nothing stops me from doing that. Alright, we've got our research lab now. Xena relations. That allows me to do treaties, which is always very handy. But at the same time, just because the fact that this is a bit quick, I'm going to go for engineering so I can get destroyers now. Because I don't want to get to a point where... I can't build them, and someone else can, and they just come and wipe out my initial things. Oh, it's the galactic news. This is another thing that can sometimes happen. to GNN, the only network that tells you what you need to know. Bringing it to you live. Galactic News Network, the galaxy's most reputable news source. You can give us any news? No. Right, okay. Galactic News is basically... If someone goes to war, that's the way it's announced. It's announced on there. If someone gets wiped out, it gets announced on there. If occasionally they'll sort of do like a, a state of the game sort of idea where they'll basically be like, oh, this race has got the most planets. This race has got the biggest army. So it kind of gives you like general information as you go, but does it in a slightly interesting way, which is pretty cool. Now, build. We want to build a military outpost. Yes. So that's going to cost one command point, which we've still got a fair few command points left. And we've, since we're slowly building up planets, we're going to have access to actually be able to upgrade that even more. So that's not majorly a problem. Oh, I love this game. I, I adore 4X games. I've covered a few of them before. And uh, as I say, I've been a Civ player for many years. So uh, it's something I do enjoy a hell of a lot. Now... I kind of want to get another colony ship right now, but for now I'm going to get the research lab. I think what I'll do is just build the upgrades here since nothing can really get over there, and I'll build the colony ship from this one. So it can literally just do one jump, colonise, one jump, colonise. I think that's probably the best way to do it for now. Pirate fleet has been detected. It's still not near us, which is the important one for me. Alright, we've got the destroyer, which is... Brilliant. Now, uh, I would like to have more credits coming in. That is definitely something I would like. I would also like to have the relations, though, just because it's nice to be able to establish treaties and all that kind of stuff. Electronic computer, deep scanners, death spores. Oh, they're fun. That's very good because it reduces pollution, so I'm actually going to get that, because if we could build that near the start, I feel like that could give us an advantage later on, because there could be less time of us messing with pollution and more time actually producing stuff. So, we'll go for that for now. Now, we've just finished that, I'm going to get this place to build me 
a colony ship, which I've completely lost and apparently I actually can't do. Fine, I was not aware of this, so there we go. God damn it. I am a fool. Okay, so <laughs> that changes things. We won't be building a colony ship from there, I'll have to build it from the other place. There's obviously an upgrade there that I'm missing that I have on this one. Colony ship. Build that. So we'll just put that on a build queue. Probably the easiest thing to do there. No. This will benefit the War and taxes are inescapable. Yeah, well, I don't mess with taxes too much because I like to keep my morale as high as I can. For as long as I can. And then we have very nearly finished uh, all my scouts all the way over there. <clears throat> so we know where the pirates are. Ooh, that's some big old galaxy up there tucked away. Oh, here we go again. GNN. The Cylon Quanta has grown in strength. And I control three planets. Okay. Well, we're working on getting our third planet, so I don't feel like we're too far behind. That's fine. Now, I haven't had much dealing with the Cylon, because in my last game, like, I literally discovered the Cylon fairly late into the game, because they were sort of took the opposite side of the galaxy to me. And li li I'm not even joking, the turn afterwards, GNM popped up again and was just like, the Cylons have been annihilated. And I was like, oh. The lizard guys had just come in, just took them out of the galaxy from the start of the game. And I was the other side of the galaxy, blissfully unaware. Ah. Transmission start. This is the overseer of the Meklar Combine, contacting unknown naturally occurring life form. Com frequencies locked. The, I like that race. That race looks awesome. So I'm guessing that's their little neck of the woods up there. I'm not really seeing a way out of there. Maybe there is. But the scout will let me know in a minute. But, uh, yeah. Still can't actually build. That's very strange. It's got to be something to do with one of these. Enables battleship construction. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's the star base. That also increases how many command points you can have. So it stands a good chance. But if we can't do it for now, I'm not majorly worried. I'll just go for the research lab and get the science up a little bit higher. Um, we'll have a couple more turns. Doesn't look like I'm going to get to do much combat today. Because we're in a very awkward place where we haven't really got anything connected to anything. I don't want to leave that frigate around either because it turns out that place is connected to everywhere. So we definitely don't want that frigate moving from there at the minute. We can send you over that way though. And I will build another military outpost in fact. Just because the fact then I know that this sector is generally defended so therefore my frigate can afford to actually go out. But I just don't want to get attacked right at the start of the game and just screwing me over. Pirates are very weak, but I would still rather them not be messing with my stuff. So, there's that. Maybe I'm just being overly defensive. I don't know. I have learned in these games that defense is usually a very good idea. You can never be too cautious. The hive Update all of our blueprints. Yes. We love the Legion. This is for your uh, consideration. Oh, I can get cruisers. Cruisers. Now, we're going to go for Xeno Relations because that's usually a good one to get involved with. Right, they got a settler over there. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's cool. Victory chance. Oh, they're going to attack my scout. And all I can do is auto-resolve. Now, this is basically the combat. There's two options when you have a normal fight. But like the scout can't fight, so it's not going to let me do this, but... You have a tactical screen, and you have an auto-resolve screen. Auto-resolve, you're going to see in a second. Um, tactical screen literally just puts you on a grid, and you can control the ships a little bit RTS-style on a 2D plane. There's not... Re but 90% of the time, the ships just sort of fire at each other from afar. They never sort of get near each other. 
and one side clearly wins. It's over very, very quickly, so it doesn't look that interesting. But auto resolve literally just sort of like does that. But depending on how it is, it'll slowly go bang, 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 and it'll count slowly. But they've they've wiped me out. They took they took out my scouts. I've never actually seen them attack a scout before, so that's interesting. There we go. We have our colony ship as well, which is also lovely. Let's make sure they don't grab any of these planets. How's our pollution doing? I mean, it's getting a little higher than I'd like, but now we have the atmospheric renewer that can reduce our pollution, so I'm hoping I can get that and sort out the problem. Right, it's, we're getting on a bit now, so I'm going to stop for now. This has been a brief introduction to the Masters of Orion. I may do some more videos just so I can get the basics out of the way, because I'm still missing loads of stuff. Um, but maybe I'll play a little bit further into it, get more to the mid-game, and then I can show you sort of everything that's going on. We'll see. You guys can let me know if you want to see more. If you want to see it literally from this point onwards, I don't mind doing that. Um, the games can be a bit dependent on how much time you spend on it. My last game took, from start to completion, just under three hours. So if I did a few half an hour videos, we could get it done fairly quickly. But it's up to you guys. You guys can let me know if that's what you want to see. If you do, let me know and I'll do it. If you don't, that's cool. But yeah, this has been it for Master of Orion. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please do drop me any comments and likes that you wish. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe for any more content that you want to see. Thank you very much and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye bye.